Welcome to another episode of Jay Helps the VA. In our last episode, we were discussing the requirements for veterans to use what is called the Mission Act. That's where they're using community care providers as opposed to a VA medical center. So in my last episode, I illustrated the, uh, you know, the four different uh, requirements for them to use it. Um, that's just the four requirements. There's also six criteria that a veteran, um, you know, basically has to meet one of these criteria on in order to use the community care. So this is part two of the Mission Act. Um, so last 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 episode was part one. This is part two. So we're going to go over the criteria that uh, can qualify for vet veterans to use the community care in, in the uh, neighborhood that they happen to reside in, as opposed to if their VMAC uh, can't do that uh, for them. So uh, we're going to start with number one. Try to make this a little brief. A uh, lot, well, you know, try to keep you guys as, uh, you know, get the information out there, but make it brief and uh, digestible. Um, so, uh, so first criteria is a veteran needs uh, a service at a VA medical facility, uh, and that VA medical center can't provide that service. So that's where it is. You, you need something, you can't get it done in episode two, which is the prior episode here. So it would have been episode one or part one of the mission act. That's where I'm basically, uh, use bill as an example and, uh, Bill is, uh, uh, you know, a veteran in Florida where he was going to try to get uh, a derm dermatology appointment at a VMAC, and he was not able to utilize the benefit. He was given the wrong information uh, at the front line by uh, a provider, uh, by a VA medical center personnel. So that's kind of the whole purpose of this, uh, you know, these... Uh, uh, YouTube uh, vlogs or uh, Jay helps the VA, uh, you know, uh, episodes is to help the veterans connect the dots. That's my mandate is to help. Uh, so that's what we're doing here is we're connecting the dots. Um, I will be able to uh, further explain other bits and pieces of the Mission Act. So this is part two. There's probably going to be a part three and a part four. So stay tuned if you like what you see. The information is helping you get the care that you need. That you need. Uh, that's where I'm here. So Jay helps the VA, serving those who served, their families, their children, and their caregivers. So step one, if the vet needs a service, not available at that VA medical center, they can go get that in the community. Okay, so that's criteria number one. Number two, vet lives in a U.S. state or territory where there's not a full service VMAC or VA medical center. Okay, so U.S. states do, do, that do not have a full service veterans area medical center, one would be Alaska, Hawaii, and a state that I lived in, New Hampshire. Well, I've lived in Hawaii and New Hampshire, so they don't have full service VMAX in Hawaii or New Hampshire, so that would qualify to use the community care. Um, U.S. territory is also included in this, uh, uh, you know, uh, criteria is Guam, American Samoa, Northern Mariana Islands. And veteran or the U.S. Virgin Islands, mind you, my uh, you know Jay helps the VA, uh, you know, um, YouTube cast here vlog is to serve veterans in all U.S. possessions, all 50 states, and all members, not just veterans, their wives, their children, their, their caregivers, everybody. That's what we're here to do here. Okay, so um, that's criteria number two, whether they got a full service VMAC in your you know, sphere of influence or not. Number three, veterans qualify under the grandfather provision related to the distance eligibility for v VACP. So there's two initial requirements that must be met in every case. So um, this is for the, for the grandfather provision. That's where the veteran was eligible for the 40 mile criterion under veterans choice. Veterans choice doesn't, is not around anymore. Mission Act replaced it. So this is what I'm putting out there for you folks because nobody, well, clarified that. Oh, Mission Act is now there. There's no more whatever vet, veteran's choice. But for the criteria, vet must be eligible under the 40-mile criterion under Veterans Choice Program on or before Mission Act was signed into law June 6th of 2018. 
Okay, that's when they rolled it out, took effect March of 19. Again, how are you guys going to know? They don't send you a bulletin or an email or even bother to tell you you can use it. Uh, B, uh, B, the second uh, uh, requirement, vet continues to reside in a location that would qualify them under that criteria. So you're still in the state that is whatever limited or you can't get the criteria under the 40-mile rule. Okay, so there, there's a, a third uh, criteria that could be met by the veteran is the grandfather rule. Number four, the vet cannot get, provi cannot get proper pro provider care under certain designated access standards. Well, those access standards are driving, driving too far or whatever, and then appointment times. Um, so here, here's the, their rules. So if your 30 minute average drive time for primary mental health or adult health care qualifies for the use in the community care. If you've got a 60 minute average drive time, and you're using specialty that qualifies for mission act if it's the 20 day if your if your appointment time is longer than 20 days so primary mental health adult uh, day health care unless the vet agrees to an appointment that's further out in the field and they do that by agreeing with their provider providing that appointment in the care in the care provider environment there's a 28 day rule for specialty so once again it's 28 days from that day of the appointment. If it gets beyond that and it's agreed upon with a provider, then that's okay. That's only if the vet and the provider have agreed upon a further date out in the uh, outfield there. So there's number four. So drive times and appointment time, or drive, drive spheres and appointment times. So number, number five, we're almost to the bottom here, is a veteran's, it is in the veteran's best medical interest. So Say they need, I always like to give examples because it makes it more, you know, finite the point, thread the needle here, okay? So say a vet needs cataract surgery. They can't, uh, you know, they can't get that local cataract surgery or it's called, it's actually the, the true terminology is interocular lens implementation with cataract surgery. So if they're trying to get the cataract surgery and they can't get that done at a VA medical center, well, where they need to get that in the community. So thus, that requires the referral, there'll be appointments, using care providers, all these other things. they will be explained in episodes probably three and four, but this is just episode number two in just the Mission Act. There'll be many other topics aside from the Mission Act covering veterans, their children, their wives, their caregivers, all kinds of different things, forms, phone numbers, connecting the dots, how to find out about things, the whole nine yards. So. Here we are, number six, let's not delay. So if a VA service line does not meet certain quality standards, well, the service lines are where you're calling in to get something done, okay, and then they're not answering. Uh, I've heard this story very recently where you just call and then there's just no answer. Uh-uh, unacceptable. Unacceptable by me, unacceptable by, by anybody, okay? So um, if the VA identifies, like say, I'm gonna give you an example, the cardiac, service or cardiology service line okay at the local VA medical service center is not meeting quality standards well then the vet may elect to use a cardiologist care in the community since they can't get somebody to pick up the phone at that local VMAC mm -mm -mm. so now there's a little disclaimer maybe limits when where and what is available under the criterion for using uh, you know, you know, using that, again, Mission Act in the community because of quality standards aren't being met. Well, there's so there's quality, there's in the veteran's best interest, there's drive times and uh, drive distances and appointment times, there's the grandfather provision, there's, uh, you know, only have, don't have a VA medical center in your state or, you know, uh, possession, U.S. possession, and uh, the service is just not available at the local VA medical center. So there's, you know, quite a bit here. Um, I try to keep it brief. Last minute, last video was 10 minutes. We try to keep this one, you know, right in that neck of the woods. So it keeps everybody's interest. They know what they're trying to get it, get out of the video and move on. So I try not to speak too fast because they're seniors I'm serving and they don't want to hear somebody that's an auctioneer. So I've got to try to make it at least digestible and, uh, you know, audible for everybody listening because everybody is my business, man, woman, child, doesn't matter. Now, um, one disclaimer, I always make it at the end of the video, I'm not a veteran. 
I worked for the Veterans Administration. I checked with them before I started making these, make sure I wasn't endangering my job or damaging the reputation of the VA. Everything I advance here is public information. So I just like to make that disclaimer so I'm not disappointing anybody or disenfranchising people. Everything I do here is in the best interest of the veteran, their caregivers, their wives, their children. Now, another a, a, uh, organization that's veteran focused that's uh, here in my sphere of influence, but it's all over the country actually, is called Team River Runner. You'll see a couple stickers on the American flag behind me. One's kind of like a symbol with some paddlers and they've got, you know, their uh, veterans uh, trying to get help uh, through a uh, healing and uh, health through paddle sports. So this is what it's called. It's called the Team River Runners. I'm involved with this organization. It's a 501c based out of Washington, D.C. President's Joe Marini. Um, you know, what it's all about is uh, helping veterans get into paddle sports. So, uh, you know, they help with all kinds of different things, whether it's transportation, whether it's the gear, whether it's the instruction, whether it's the boats, can be stand-up paddle, can be uh, kayaks, rafting, all kinds of good stuff like that. I'll be doing an, uh, a specific uh, episode just on TRR. Uh, this is just kind of just uh, every episode. I'm going to push things, pushing this organization. It's free to veterans. Okay, so if they're suffering from a disability or PTSD, or they're uh, you know uh, got some other disability. This is, it's all aimed about getting veterans engaged with other veterans, getting out there, getting some exercise, doing something that's positive, and it doesn't cost them anything. So I thought it was, I thought it was only 30, 30 chapters in 50 states. No, there's 65 chapters in 30 states, 65 chapters, 30 states. It's all over the place. There's, there's five just in the state of Colorado where I'm at. So. Uh, you want to want know more information about it, you can reach out to me. I've gotten permission from them. So I'm pushing them. They're a nonprofit. They don't make any money. And, well, I'm a nonprofit too, as it were. Um, so I'm a one-man army here. But the veterans need this visibility. This organization needs this visibility. So it's a symbiotic relationship. I'm doing it for them. Uh, I, I, we have got together this week on Tuesday. First, first time I was able to get with them since the COVID. And... Uh, uh, guess what, folks? I learned my uh, kayak roll. Amazing. Uh, wasn't I, It was just destiny. I was with veterans. I had a couple of vets out there that weren't even, they hadn't even gotten in a boat before. So uh, it's it's for everybody. It's for the vets. You know, you know just if you need information, the uh, J helps the VA. Uh, Gmail is in the, gonna, it's going to be embedded in the info. Um, so if you like what I'm doing here, like, subscribe, tell other veterans. I'll be continuing these episodes. There'll be more information on the Mission Act next week. Mission Act Part Three. Okay, we'll talk about uh, you know uh, finding providers and getting uh, authorizations or referrals. And you know, there's going to be other layers to this. That's why I'm trying. To, I got to break it into pieces. It's too much to do in one episode. Or you guys are just going to get lost and go go to Netflix. So here it is. Jay helps the VA serving those who served and their families, caregivers, and children, okay? Uh, do another episode next week. It'll probably be Mission Act Part 3. Thank you very much for watching. Like, subscribe. God bless America. God bless the servicemen and their women that are out there defending our freedom. Talk to you again soon. I'm Jay, Jay Hills, the VA.